Okay, right, so I know it said that I wouldn't do this. You guys can go back and look at an older video. I have a video on why I'm not getting back into hotshot trucking. Now you can see, of course, we are gonna be getting back into it. So I am going to be going over some preparations today. I'm gonna have a whole series of videos on for you guys about the power only side and what I used to do. Um, you can see we started with this. I'm gonna go do a, an entire walk around of how we built a sleeper out. I know it looks a little cocked right now. Um, I'll go over that in a little bit. We also got uh, some new rails to replace the ones like I told you guys. It took them a month to send them out, kind of sucks, but I'm gonna be replacing these rails and show you what's wrong with them and how to install new ones. So I'm here with Brandon, we're in his shop. I'll link his stuff uh, below. But like I said, this is the truck. I'm gonna be using it going back. We just, uh, the 12 valve swap, everything's almost done. We just need to fix the instrument cluster. And what else do I need to do? Um, so my main reasoning, I wanna go over all of the numbers, uh, what I'm gonna be running, um, how much money I make per week, how much money I spend in fuel, everything, how much is gonna go back to taxes and into savings, and how much money this thing needs in repairs when we're done. So we're gonna be running 26,000 pounds or less, no more 21,000 pound trailers like I was doing. Um, and then, yeah, I have a company to lease under instead of having my own authority like I did. So having your own authority is very expensive. You have your own insurance, you cover everything. It's very expensive. We're gonna see if we can save a little bit of money and run under, under somebody else's um, under a certain percentage. I'll go over that with you guys in a future video. But that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a series of videos on this and go from there so we're on a tight budget is going to start hauling shit with ford transits so i'm going to get over back there to the gooseneck rails we're going to go over that and let's without further ado let's get into the video all right so as you guys can see these are the rails that we got they're nice powder coated there's no cracks in them or anything like that we did get the fire extinguisher mounted so that's what we got going on for that quick release and then if you guys can see that there's a crack right there so that's why we're getting rid of those Ugh. scrap pile bring her over scrap pile see these were nice when i was you know before when i had the boxes up top on the sides but i couldn't do fifth wheel work well now that i'm getting back into it this way worry about it i like that toolbox and i'm hoping i don't have to get rid of it all right so before i continue with these rails as you can see nice new no cracks unlike this one here started growing a crack in it um dot requires three things on the truck we need to have a mounted fire extinguisher so you guys can see i already showed you this is already mounted um you have to have triangles which are in the box here so we have our triangles and then you also need spare fuses which i do have spare fuses in here and then i also have spare bulbs even though i don't need them but i have a spare bulb for everything on the truck i have led bulbs the whole way around and then i also have the factory bulbs that i pulled out when i replaced it so say a headlight goes out i have a factory headlight bulb so you need those three things so now we're going to get these things thrown on and uh yeah, hopefully these are a lot more heavy duty and we're gonna do it right so every piece of hardware in here is gonna get put in no matter how much I don't like it. set up all the bolts are tight you can see that we did put them all in even if i didn't want to gooseneck fits underneath the fifth wheel we will be switching this at some point but really at some point yeah. but this uh works for now looking into the spider hitch so that should go into the outer holes but 
for now this will do fine yeah if we ever worry about length with the gooseneck this will give us a couple of inches either towards the back or you can flip it around and the ball will sit on the other end so there's that all set up hey real quick i did get a question about my high idle switch so what i ended up doing was uh, I put a switch here, there was a hole already. So basically I can sit here, I'll hit the throttle and I can pull this out. And then you can see now we're high idling. Um, I'm gonna show that real quick up under the hood. you probably couldn't see that all too well um, but it basically goes up through the firewall and then comes out and over and then just kind of hooks around and it's at a spot where it's trying to push against it so it's not gonna pop off um, you could probably get the cruise control from the 12 valve and uh, run it off of that possibly that's how I have mine routed so just so that you guys um, this is on a 12 valve uh, out of a 96 Dodge Ram 2500 Something else I'm gonna put in here. Um, if you are gonna go out and do this, this is one thing that I did this before. I, I think I did a video on this somewhere. Get yourself a good set of gauges on these modified trucks. Um, at the bare minimal, I recommend an exhaust gas temperature gauge, but a fuel pressure gauge is nice and a boost pressure gauge on these older trucks is nice because you can diagnose if something's wrong like if you see that this is only building 15 or 10 pounds of boost you know that something's wrong so I definitely recommend boost um, fuel pressure from the fuel pump uh, in my case you know uh, this is very important for these 12 valves and then I have oil pressure you probably should get one of these oil pressure gauges just because that uh, the gauge on the dash is a dummy gauge um, on these older trucks. The newer trucks just have one built in, so you can have boost and oil pressure built in. But on the older trucks, definitely fuel pressure and EGT, and on the automatics, get a transmission temperature gauge. Any of the thir uh, any of the older trucks, they don't have that. The newer trucks, luckily, you do get that, so. All right, so we're gonna finish this video out. I wanna show you guys exactly what we did for the sleeper. So last time you guys saw, I do have a video on this of how to do a sleeper setup on your truck. Usually I take the back seats out and we'll build a platform. In this case, so there's hooks on the back of these Dodge seats and then they go into little, oof, little brackets right here. And then there's brackets over here. I took the brackets off where, it cut, where the seat comes up so you can actually fold it down and then sit the mattress on it. Now, unfortunately in my case, now it's comfortable for me. It looks like it's sitting up. In the middle, it's dead flat and you can see like over here, like it sits up over the center. This isn't exactly my favorite setup because I don't like how high the bed is. I liked how it was before, but I do have a lot more storage space below this and I get to keep my back seats. So whenever I come home, I can literally just put my back seats back up and you know, throw the car seat back there and all good to go. If I take the back seats out, then the back two bolts you gotta hit with a wrench and then the front two you can use an impact. So it's kind of inconvenient and then I gotta store those seats. So yeah, pretty much that's what it is. All right guys, so I'm gonna finish this video out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, this is step one to getting this thing ready for transport. I put about, I, I did a video on it, I put about sixty-five, seven thousand dollars $7,000 into this thing this year to get this whole thing restored and going over. Uh, the instrument cluster is one of the last things that we need to do. I have a bunch of other goodies uh, coming to make my life easier on the road. Um, so generators, inverters, battery chargers, um, new radio, bezels already here. So a bunch of other stuff and maybe we'll upgrade the gooseneck ball hitch. Uh, we also got a Bluetooth for when we go on the road. Those blue parrots are absolute garbage. So if you wanna, uh, want me to do a video on that, let me know. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care, have a good one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.